G'day! Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics, where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson. What I propose to do in this video is first show you a method for finding, let's say, a fifth root of a number, and then generalize it to a method by which you can calculate by hand the nth root of some number uh, to pretty well as much, uh, as high a degree of accuracy as you wish. Now, We'll start with the fifth power simply because it's easy to demonstrate with an actual number. Let's imagine that we start with a number n and we wish to find the fifth root of that number. What we start is we realise that the fifth root to the power of 5 would equal that original number. In other words, the power of 5 undoes, if you like, it's an inverse function, of taking the fifth root. And now we assume, or at least we try, try to find a value a which is as close to this fifth root as we can get. So it's our first estimate if you like. So let the first estimate of the fifth root of n be a and we're trying to do a fairly good job of it and get as close as we possibly can. The reason being that we're not going to choose the exact value because the fifth root of a number is normally irrational, which means it's an infinitely long decimal, and no matter what uh, rational number, what fraction or whole number or whatever we choose, it's not going to exactly equal uh, the fifth root of n. But if we choose very closely, then it will differ from the fifth root of n by a tiny, tiny little amount, which I'll call epsilon. So this must be true. Uh, let's put here, uh, epsilon is the amount by which a differs from the fifth root of n. And our, our problem really is to find the value of a, because if we can do that, adding them together will tell us the fifth root much, much more accurately. So how do we do that? We expand this. Now, the first term of the expansion is going to be a to the power of 5. The second one is going to be 5 a to the 4 epsilon. The third one, now you might recall in the last video that I reminded you or showed you uh, how Pascal's triangle helps us with this, because I'm not going to go the way of combinations just yet. But Pascal's triangle is structured this way, where each number is the sum of the two digits above it. 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3, if you like 0 and 1 is 1, uh, 1 and 3 is 4, 0 and 1 is 1, 3 and 3 is 6, 3 and 1 is 4, 1, and 1 and 4 is 5, 4 and 6 is 10, 6 4 is 10, 5 and 1. And these happen to be the coefficients that we need when we expand binomial expressions. And for a fifth power, this is the row we need. So we're going to have 1 of these a to the fifth. We're going to have 5 of this combination. We're going to have 10 a cubed epsilon squared and 10 a squared epsilon cubed and 5, I've just moved the top ones here, a epsilon to the 4 plus epsilon to the 5, and its coefficient is 1. But you can see that Pascal's triangle helped us uh, perform that expansion quite nicely. I'm sorry for the mess here, but I don't want to stop the video just yet. So we now have this expression. This is assuming that epsilon is the exact value by which a differs from the fifth root. If a is very, very close, then epsilon is minute. It's a very, very tiny number. 
And when you've got a very tiny number to the fifth power, you get something extraordinarily small. For example, if epsilon was just one hundredth, epsilon to the fifth power will be one over one with ten zeros, which is going to be ten, one over ten billion. So extraordinarily small. Whereas this number will be very, very close to n. Consequently, if we're looking in terms of size, this compared to this is so small we can actually ignore it if we want an estimate. Even e to the power 4, epsilon to the power 4 and epsilon to the power 3 and even epsilon squared will be very tiny. These are going to be the two biggest terms. So, we now say that this is an approximation. I'm going to write this in reverse because we're going to try to find an expression for epsilon. So, I should have left room. I like to keep my equal signs lined up, but uh, I haven't really left room on the board to write this. So I'm going to start here. A to the 5 plus 5, A to the 4, epsilon e is approximately equal to n. Subtracting a to the fifth power from both sides will give 5 a to the 4 epsilon is approximately equal to n minus a to the fifth and epsilon will be approximately n minus a to the fifth over 5 a to the 4. And that's the expression we're going to use. Now I'll use this with some number uh, very, very shortly. What I wish to point out is how it generalizes. If we want the nth root, do I want n or I want k? I think you can live with a small n for nth root. Then the adjustment factor we're going to need is going to be n minus a to the little n over n a to the n minus 1. Those of you who do calculus will recognize this. You may even realize why it's these two terms, uh, especially if you make these calculations using first principles and, uh, and taking limits, and you'll see why these terms appear. But this is what we want the nth, to find the nth root. So if you want the 17th root, then you make an estimate of the 17th root and you'll have a power 17 and 17 and 8 are the 16 here. If you want a square root, you will make an estimate and you'll have a squared and then 2a to the 1 or just 2a on the bottom. And perhaps at the end of this video I might just find a square root very quickly as well. But this is the methodology. We make an estimate and then we calculate the next estimate by finding this adjustment factor which takes this form. It'll make more sense when I demonstrate it, so I'm going to remove this. I'll write this up the top because we will find a fifth root and then perhaps we'll find a square root. And uh, I hope this will make good sense to you, for you and I encourage you to try it yourself. You can always check your answer on a calculator but it's just nice to go through the exercise and understand how numbers can be approximated by hand. Let's have a go. Well, we encountered some difficulties. So unfortunately the previous part of the video had to be put away for a couple of weeks and I'm back here finishing it off. This is how we estimate that adjustment factor for a fifth root. Uh, for me it's two weeks old, for you it's about 30 seconds old. But we're going to use this. And we're going to use it to find the fifth root of some number. Now. I used something way up in the 180s last time, uh, I believe, 
So let's choose something a bit smaller. Let's choose something under 100. Let's say, I don't know, 67. That'll do. I literally made that up on the spot. And let's say that's approximately equal to our first estimate A. And let's get work out a value for A. Well, we know that 1 to the power 5 is worth 1. We know that 2 to the power 5, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, is worth 32. And we know that 3 to the power 5, 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3, uh, I hope you know this figure, by the way, uh, 243, but 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 nines are 81, and 3 81s is actually quite easy, because 3 ones are 3, and 3 8 to 24. Now this number here, 67, is in between these two. So our fifth root is going to be 2 point something. It's going to be in there. Just what? Well, let's look at the gaps. From 32 up to 67 is a gap of 35. From 67 to 243 is a much, much larger gap. Uh, um, it's 176. Now, we would like to estimate that this gap as a fraction, as a decimal. So the decimal will be 35 out of whatever this gap is. So 35 out of, add them together or subtract 32 from 243. Either way, you should get 211. I think you can see that it's roughly a seventh It's not a really exciting number, is it? Let's go 211 into 35. Let's just check it out. It won't go here. Into 250, it will go once. 211, sorry, uh, 923139, that is 0. Two, two into this goes about 6. Uh, 6 times this would be 1266. Six. 2 into this, well you can see it's very very close to 6 again isn't it? Roughly, not quite that much. So, let's say it's about 0.17. I'm going to round it off as 2.2. Now I have a reason for that. Uh, I don't want to, when I put this number in, I don't want to do 2.16 or 166 to the power 5, or 167 to the power 5. This is going to be quite difficult enough. Our adjustment factor is going to be 67, that's the number, minus 2.2, to the power 5 over 5 times 2.2 to the power 4. Now that means we've got to multiply 2.2 by itself 5 times. You can see why mathematicians of old did not exactly look forward to this kind of activity. Consequently, some of them, this is before the days of electronic calculators and uh, and even good mechanical calculators, some of them would calculate roots and other things by hand and publish their papers, publish their tables and sell them to other mathematicians and to engineers to save them the trouble. And they were highly sought after. This is one of the methods they used to calculate them. So let's work out. 2.2 by 2.2 by 2.2 by 2.2 by 2.2. That's 2 to 2.2 to the fifth power. And this part of it is 2.2 to the fourth power. So we'll work out both of those. Now, I don't even pretend to be a, an arithmetic, arithmetical calculating genius. There are some on YouTube who are very impressive, uh, but I'm not one of them. 
I do know, however, what 22 squared is. Uh, in another video, I'll be recommending that if you want to become good at mathematics, that you learn up to 32 squared. And I'll give reasons why and suggest ways of learning them. But 22 squared is 484. And with the decimal places there, that product is 4.84. This product will be 4.84. So we now have to calculate this. And that would be 2.2 to the power 4. Let's do it. 4.84, 4.84. 4 fours are 16, carry the 1. 4 eights are 32, 33, carry the 3. 16, 19. Put a 0. Now, 8 times this is going to be twice that. So, twice 36 is going to be 72, and twice 19 is 38. And then we're going to have a 4 again, so it's going to be 1, 9, 3, 6, 0, 0. Now, um, 16, 22, 2. I shouldn't talk while I do this because I invariably make mistakes. My brain doesn't work well if I talk and calculate. We have four decimal places. So this is going to be 23.4256. Let's put that in place. 5 times 23.4256. And on the top, we're going to have 67 minus. Now, to get 2.2 to the fifth power, we've just worked this out. So we have to multiply by 2.2 again. Fortunately, it's fortuitous that it worked out such a simple number, actually. Twice this, twice 6 is 12, carry the 1. Um, my poor brain. <laughs> okay, 5, 1, 2, 2, 3, 6, 3, 5, 1, 5, with 4, 5 decimal places. So that's going to be 5, 1, 0.53632. So you can see our first approximation, 2.2 to the power 5, was a little way off 67. And hopefully this adjustment factor will get it much closer. So let's calculate. This minus this will be, take that from 10, then take these from 9. So 6, 3, 6, uh, 4. And then we've got 2 from 7 is 5. 1, 5. And down here we've got 5 times all of this. Uh, I'm going to leave that. Because I'm going to divide 5 up into here and just make my next calculation uh, just a little bit easier. So 5's into this goes 3.1. By the way, a shorthand, shortcut for multiplying by five, sorry, dividing by five is to double the number and move the decimal point. Now if I double the number, twice eight's 16 carry the one, 12, 13 carry the one, seven, two carry the one, uh, nine. What have I done wrong? Oh, there's no one there. Let's try it. 6, tick, 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 9, 3, 0. Oh, there it is. I just mixed up two methods and I got muddled up on the way. So we've got to actually work this out as a decimal. Now, because I'm not after a lot of significant figures, I'm going to approximate it. And we're going to have to... I hope this will work. I'm sorry for the grubbiness of the board but it means stopping the video otherwise. I'm going to divide, uh, let's say 23.4 into this. So I'm just going to approximate the denominator and 3.092736. We're not going to go nearly that far. 23, oh, I should point out, if we're making this division, this, these decimals jump over, 
So a decimal is going to be there. Let's move them now. 234 doesn't go into 30. 234 goes in 309 once. 4 from 9 is 5. I hope I've not rushed too much. That we'll um, just see what happens anyway. Bring the 2 down. 2 into this goes about 3 times. Uh, 3 4s, 12, carry 1, 10, 1, 7. That's pretty close. You see 50 and bring down the 7. You can see it goes about twice again, roughly. Now we're really only about after about one or maybe two decimal places. Let's call it 0.13. So it's approximately 0 0.13. So we say therefore the fifth root of 67, we use our first figure and we add the adjustment factor. So 2.2 .2 plus 0 0.13 would give us 2.33. Now I'm expecting the 2.33 will be a lot, lot closer. And uh, to do that, I realise I'm going to have to grab my calculator, so bear with me. I should need my glasses as well. Uh, 2.33 to the power 5 is actually getting up there fairly close. Uh, 2.33 to the power 5 is approximately 68.67198564, which is approximately 68.7. So you can see it's getting quite close to 67. Another way of looking at it would be to say the fifth root of 67. Where are we? There we go. Fifth root of 67 is 2.318541963. And you can see that this is about 2.32. So we've got better than 2.2 was. We've got now got the 2.3 in a little bit. If we then use that as our value A and calculated another approximation we would get an even closer figure. But you can see the calculations get worse and worse as one goes on. Why do I share the exercise? I share it for a few reasons. One, it's good for you to understand how mathematicians of old did things before the existence of electronic calculators. Another reason is that it's good for you to see how these adjustment factors are calculated using binomial expansions, or calculus or graph work. Uh, I showed that in, in another in the previous video. So it's good for you to see how the algebra, the calculus, our understanding of numbers all work together. And mathematics is like that. So this is just part of your wallpaper, so part of your background in understanding mathematics. Of course you're not going to do this. Uh, I, it's a long time since I did something like that. I did it a number of times when I was in school and I've done it a mere handful of times since, I must admit, but it's a good thing to have done at least some time in your mathematical career. And I recommend that somewhere in the next few hours or few days, you set time aside and try to find yourself a fifth root or a fourth root or a cube root of some number. I was going to show you a square root, but time has really run out. This is a long video. Uh, so I'm going to produce a very short video following this, just finding a square root of some small number. I hope that's been of help to you. If you've enjoyed the video, then please leave a comment or certainly click the like button. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, then please click on the subscribe button here and uh, join the merry throng and you'll find out about future videos as they appear. Thank you for watching.